Have you owned your C7 for a while and realized that it takes a long time for your cell phone to connect to the Bluetooth system with your MMI, maybe two to three minutes at times? Or maybe you've been driving around and seen a street that didn't show up on your GPS system. Well, that's because your MMI system is not updated and it costs a lot of money to go to the dealership and get everything updated. In this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to update your MMI system and enable some other features depending on what your car you have using Ben Weaving's updates. You have probably seen him on the forums. He also has a website called The Nav Man. We'll have links to that and everything. But if this is something that interests you, especially for the facelift cars who can enable Android Auto or Apple CarPlay with his updates, stick around and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, so the first thing we need to be aware about is which MMI system we have in the car that is being worked on breaks down basically to pre-facelift vehicles and post-lift vehicles for the C7 generation. Pre-facelift C7s have 3G+, post-facelift have 4G. The biggest difference between these two is that the 4G vehicles have the ability to enable Android Auto and Apple CarPlay for their vehicles. I'm really jealous that we can't do that on the C7s because all we get to update are the maps and the connectivity issues with your Bluetooth as well as continuity issues in terms of maintaining GPS signal and maintaining connectivity. Still a huge update for us, especially considering to do this at the dealership would be over $300. Doing it with Ben Weaving is gonna cost you, I think a third of that. So that's really, really awesome. It makes it very, very simple to do at home and it's gonna maybe take anywhere from 30 minutes to possibly a couple of hours, depending on exactly how much of an update you have to do. So let me show you how to find your current firmware or software file that you're running on your car because Ben will need to know that. In order to find the firmware or software update you're currently running, you want to first go to your car's menu. Once you go to the car menu, you want to click on the top right button for setup MMI. Once you're in this menu, you want to use your wheel to navigate down all the way to the bottom to version information. Press in on your control knob and it brings up your current MMI version information. You can see there, mine says HN plus R, and then you can see it's got navigation database version and the NAR stands for North America. When we update this, it's gonna update the maps for not just the United States, but for Canada and Mexico as well. So this is what you need to know when you're first reaching out to Ben on Facebook. After you've placed your order with Ben on his website or through him directly, he is going to send you three SD cards. And you can see I've got mine here. They're packaged in a nice protected little packet. It is coming from the UK, but it took for me about a week to arrive. And we've got three separate SD cards and you can see it says, it's got my software version, the HN plus R, it says US Maps, US SW, US ACT. And on top of that, once you make the purchase, he is going to send you a link to a PDF file that is directions, very specific directions on how to accomplish this update. Now, one thing to be aware of, your car may have to take up to an hour, possibly two hours to do this full update. So either have a trickle charger on your battery or just turn your car on and let it run for the duration of this. Pro tip, if you're doing this in your garage, make sure it's well ventilated. You don't want any kind of these fumes building up in the garage causing any kind of health issues. So make sure the doors are open, have some fans blowing the exhaust out, just be really safe. So where do you put your SD cards in? Well, if you don't know this, all you need to do is go over here, press the open button, and it flips this up, and you can see that there's SD1, SIM, and SD2. That's what we're gonna be using to update the system. So I decided to print out my instructions so I don't have to fumble around with dealing with like a tablet or laptop while I'm in here. The very first page here has a table of contents and it tells you what each of the SD cards are. And you can see that SW is the firmware update, maps is your map update, ACT is activation. So it tells you what each of those are. But right there in the middle is your disclaimer. That's the first thing. And it says, connect your car with a battery charger or leave the engine running. Failure to do this is likely to end up with a failed installation and a broken system. So if you don't do this, if you don't leave your car running, you don't protect for that, and the system shuts off halfway through the update and it can't complete it, it could brick your MMI. So make sure you heed that warning. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna update on this car is the firmware uh, part of the software. In order to do that, we need to get into the engineering menu of our MMI. So what I'm about to do is specific to my car, 
It might be different on yours depending on what kind of MMI system you have. So make sure you follow the directions that Ben sends to you. But for me, I'm gonna come down here to my buttons. I'm going to press the car button and hold it down. And as soon as I press it down and start holding, I'm gonna press the back button and hold it down. I'm gonna do that till the screen changes. So it's gonna look like this. And there we are, we're in the engineering menu at this time. So the SD card labeled SW, that is our firmware update, you know, it's SW for software. So we need to take this one and according to the directions, we're going to put that into SD card slot one. Now that we have the SD card in slot one, we need to actually press update. So you can see on the screen, it's the bottom right. If you don't know those numbers, or I'm sorry, those words with the red lines underneath them, those correspond to these four buttons around your knob, okay? So this one is gonna coincide with update on the screen. So we're gonna go and press that. And it brings up this menu. From here, we're going to scroll down with the big knob and we're gonna select source in the menu, which is SD1 for SD card slot one. So here is the software that's on the SD card. That's the one that Ben sent to us. And we need to select it just by pressing in on the big knob. It's gonna go in, it's gonna read the information that's on it. And we're gonna scroll down and click user defined. So once you do that, you're gonna be brought up to this. And this is a list of things that are going to be updated. And you can scroll down and see everything. Now here's where something really important happens. I'll go ahead and show you my directions here. This is about your stereo system. If you've got Bose or Bang & Olufsen, you must not update anything associated with the Bose or Bang & Olufsen systems. So he gives a list of things that you might see, and if you see any of those on this list that are showing anything other than N or N slash A, you need to change it. So, like I go down here and my Bose, it has an N on there, that means it's not gonna be updated. So we wanna make sure that stays that way. So I'm gonna go through my list real quick and make sure nothing on his list is going to be updated that shouldn't be. Once we've ensured that none of our stereo stuff is gonna get messed up, we take the big knob and we scroll all the way to the bottom and there's gonna be one last option that is just start update. We're gonna click on that. It says updates must not be interrupted. So make sure you have your battery charger or your car running. We're gonna go up and we'll press start. Okay, so this is just part of the process here on the software update, and you can see that it's showing you the percentage. So this gives you an idea of how long it might actually take. Uh, I'm gonna assume at the top there it says step one out of one updates 12. I'm not sure if that means there's 12 updates that it has to do, which that actually makes sense because that's about how many were on the list. So it looks like I'm gonna be out here for probably, if it goes at this rate for all of them, probably about 15 to 20 minutes just on this first SD card. Okay, so we just got done updating the software or firmware and it brings up this device summary. And from here, we need to scroll all the way down. And the last option is continue. And when we hit continue, it's gonna bring up something that says, uh, something about documentation. And I guess that's something that dealers know how to just store what they've done. So let's see what happens. We hit continue. So it brings up this list and the directions say, click the option that says abort documentation or cancel documentation. And obviously right here we have abort documentation. I can't actually scroll to anything else. So we're gonna click the button on abort documentation. Now it is going to reboot one more time. Okay, so my MMI just finished rebooting for the last time from the firmware update. It's all done, so we're done with that and we can remove the SW SD card out of the vehicle and we can move on to the map section. For those of you curious, for me, that first update took approximately 20 minutes all said and done. All right, the next system we're gonna update are the maps and you update the maps for this car in the exact same way that you updated the firmware with one small exception. Let me show you what that is. All right, here's the difference. When you update the maps for my car, it could potentially be different for yours. On my car, instead of going down and selecting user defined like we did for the last one, we need to just select standard. Once again, you go through this list where you make sure that uh, nothing with your stereo system is selected, and then you're gonna go through the same steps as you just did and get this update going. It appears
far that the map updates only has three different updates. So this should go a little bit faster than the firmware update. I was wrong. I was so wrong. There are far more than three updates in this pack and it is taking a very long time. I'm about 30 minutes into it right now. I'm just praying it's done soon. Oh my God, y'all. That one took about 45 minutes. That, that was a long time. So it's just booting up right now, as you can see. Uh, once it's done booting up, we'll finish this map process just like we did the first round. And after that, we go to the third SD card, which is the activation one. And the way that gets updated is a little bit different and apparently is a very critical uh, process on how you do it. So we're gonna finish waiting for this to reboot and I'll show you how to do the last card. Hopefully that one goes a lot faster. All right, so the last card is the activation card. That's what ACT stands for. And this one is different. So what we're gonna do is right now we're just in the drive select menu and we're gonna go to the navigation uh, menu, the navigation system. And it says that when we do that, we should get a blocked or not enabled message once we do it. Don't enter the activator SD card until you get the blocked or not enabled message or the not available message on screen. And it can take up to a couple of minutes. So it's really important, don't put the card in too early. After that, only when you get this message, put the SD card into slot number one. We remember we're uh, the 3G Plus, so we're gonna be waiting for 15 seconds. If everything's done according to the instructions, the MMI will reboot on its own, and once it reboots, you're all done. If you've got the 3G, the earlier one, it's gonna be 15 to 30 seconds, a pop-up script will be presented, press any button to execute, and then press any button to exit. The additional step for a 3G vehicle, if you just have the regular 3G, is you'll have to reboot your, your MMI by holding down your menu button and the top right selector button next to the big knob, which is highlighted there on the screen. You can see that. So ours, since we have 3G+, Plus, should reboot on its own. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the navigation button down here. We'll see what happens. Let's wait around and see when it comes up. Okay, so we finally got the message. Navigation data is not available. So we are going to throw this bad boy into the SD card, the ACT card, which is activation. So let me get this into the SD slot. And so it says we should wait about 15 seconds and it should automatically reboot on its own. And there it goes. It is rebooting on its own, just like the directions say. And according to my directions over here, once it's done rebooting, we are completely done with the install and update. The only thing it says that we might have to do afterwards is we might have to take the car for about a five minute drive to reset the GPS and relocate the vehicle, which I'm not gonna do tonight because it's late and I just don't feel like going to drive, so I'll do that tomorrow. If for whatever reason there's an issue with that, I will let you guys know in the video, but so far everything's worked perfectly. Okay, just finished rebooting, we're all back. We can see that it's initializing the navigation after we just did that, so let's see. And there we go, everything is working perfectly. Okay, so how do you know that all your updates are successful? Well, let me show you. We're gonna do what we did in the beginning and we are going to check out the firmware version and compare it to what it was in the beginning. So we go to menu, set up MMI, scroll down to version information. We get on there and we can see that we now have the most up-to-date firmware and software versions here in the navigation database. It's all been updated compared to what we had beforehand. All right, so we're all done updating the MMI and that includes our firmware software, it can, includes our navigation, all our maps and things like that, and the connectivity issues with MMI. Because prior to doing this, when I come out of my car in the morning and turn it on and wait for it to connect to Bluetooth, it would take a solid two to three minutes. And it would do this weird thing where like the volume would come up, but it'd be faded out and stuck at a certain level and I couldn't adjust it. Now I come out to the car and it is like an immediate connectivity. It's, it's awesome. As soon as I turn the car on and I'm in the car, it's connected, it starts playing music. Love that, it's one of my biggest complaints about my car. Uh, the navigation looks great, it's got 
all these roads that were never displayed beforehand that are you know around me so really happy about that shout out to ben weaving the nav man check the uh, description below for links to his website if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments but he's awesome if you talk to him on facebook his support for his product is just stellar he's always there to answer questions and he stands behind his product and if you're on the facebook forums you know that he's the number one recommended person when people are asking about updating their mmi and there's a good reason for it because his product works it's easy to do this process was extremely easy the hardest part is literally just waiting for the updates to complete total time for me was about an hour and 40 hour and 45 minutes to get this done as always guys if you have questions leave them in the comments below please subscribe to the channel like the video and i will see you on the next video